Shabbat Shalom. Over four decades ago at the University of Pennsylvania, I was dating the woman I presumed I would eventually marry. She was Jewish, smart, beautiful, professionally ambitious. She liked sports, she kept kosher, and her father was chief of, a cardiology, of cardiology at a big hospital. <laughs> During the second half of our senior year, we both engaged in the traumatic process of finding jobs which would at least help pay the rent and at most lead to some promising career path. After each interview, my girlfriend asked me, how much does that job pay? And what kind of salary and promotions can you get in the future? And she was never very happy with the answers. <laughs> Always disappointed in my prospects. So I broke up with her. I told her I could not have that lifelong pressure and that somehow I had missed this part of her. I guess love can be blind. The woman I thought I knew and wanted to be with was not actually that person. Thus, I returned to Lexington with no girlfriend, but with a job and one that helped me launch a very successful career. Thank you very much. I was nearly 22 at the time, and I knew I wanted to be married, and I determined I would not date someone more than a few times if I did not see the potential for marriage. Back in the 1980s, there was no J-date, no hinge, nothing to swipe left or right. Spark Networks, led by our own Adam Medros, now serves 100 million people worldwide seeking meaningful relationships. I love Adam, but he was only about seven to 10 years old when I needed him. <laughs> he would have been no help to me. My profile, if honest, would have been 23-year-old Jewish man making well under $20,000 a year, no defined career plan, short and already balding. <laughs> Looks, a beauty is in the mind of the beholder. Hangs out most weekends with the Temple Amuna High School age U.S. Wires as their advisor and basketball coach. Of course, I had my own list for my own dream woman. Had to be Jewish, good looking with long straight hair, athletic, smart, likes to do what I like to do. That'd be easy, right? Then the sage engineer, Fred Ezekiel, having been apprised of this list, after multiple, multiple failures, asked, what if you meet a woman, woman who meets all these criteria and she actually doesn't like you? <laughs> so I had to change my list. On the top of the list became, has to like me. <laughs> it turns out that any digital dating tool available today had a reasonable analog equivalent in the 1980s. In addition to my own mother of blessed memory, I had about 10 to 15 other mothers right here at Temple Amuna, <laughs> working feverishly to help me find my true love. This was a networking powerhouse. Blind dates, as you remember, were a staple of prehistoric dating. The mothers knew me. They presumably knew the women they expected would lead me to lifelong romantic bliss. Sadly, most of the time, very few items of the list were checked including the one about her liking me. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Strike one. So I took matters into my own hands and went to bars, Jewish singles events, and even to a Jewish dating service. For a few hundred bucks, they promised you three to five dates with nearly guaranteed compatible women. How do they do that, you might ask? Well, they start with a Polaroid picture. There were no iPhone 16s back and a detailed questionnaire, which essentially recreated the list. But I was able to see a picture in the corresponding list belonging to the people the matchmaker thought would be just great for me. Suffice it to say, strike two. Years passed. Stubbornly clicking, clinging to my list, I was as yet unmarried with no clear prospects. In 1987, I went to Washington, D.C. for a summer weekend to visit a friend I knew from years of working in USY here in New England. She hosted Shabbat dinner, 
And one of the people there was Elise. Not an intentional attempt at a fix-up at all. In fact, I found her quite aloof and spent the evening talking to a guy named Mike. <laughs> Elise, she will tell you, didn't think of me at all. <laughs> the next time we saw each other was, following December, was the following December at a USY con uh, international convention in Baltimore. Not, not sure she, she even remembered me, but we miraculously connected and I saw her a total of about seven more times before she had moved from DC to Boston and we were essentially engaged to be married. I had not yet met her mother in Tampa and her friends thought she was absolutely crazy. Next month, still deeply in love, we will celebrate our 35th wedding anniversary. <clears throat> With full approval, I can tell you that Elise did not check several boxes of the list. <laughs> True, she is Jewish and good looking. I think I can say she likes me. No point getting into more detail if I want to be married another 35 years. <laughs> the funny thing is that we learned over time that we're about as different as two people can be. I like cooler temperatures, she likes warm. I like milk chocolate, she prefers dark. I'm an early riser, she's a night owl. Her politics are decidedly more liberal than mine, though we have moved a bit towards each other over the years. She has accommodated my interest in sports, but she could really live without them. I gave up skiing. She's a Floridian. She won't even swim in the Gulf of Mexico in November. <laughs> well, I will happily jump into Nauset Beach in July. Yet what we had in common 35 years ago still connects us today. Our commitment to a common set of values, most assuredly growing from our Judaism. The big things, how we want to live our lives, treat people, most importantly each other, raise children, what kind of community do we want to be in? What core values can we build a life around? How will Judaism inform our life decisions and inform our parenting? Where will we donate our time and our money? On these, we are most simpatico. On the little things, not so much. Thousands of years ago, as we learn in today's Parsha Chaye Sarah, Abraham's servant, we presume to be a man named Eliezer, was tasked with finding a wife for Yitzchak. Abraham said, you must go to my former land, to Haran, the place where my family still lives, and take a wife from among, among, from among them for my son, Isaac. Behold, the servant said to him, perhaps the woman will not wish to follow me to this land. Abraham assures Eliezer that God will help. So off he went, greatly concerned about his ability to accomplish the mission. How could he find this woman? And he prayed. Eliezer said, God, God of my master Abraham, arrange events for me this day, such that you grant the favor to my master Abraham. Behold, I'm standing by the water fountain, and the daughters of the people of the city are coming out to draw water. Let it be that the maiden to whom I say, please tilt your pitcher so that I might drink, and who replies, drink, and I will also give water to your men and camels, will be the one whom you have designated for your servant Isaac. I will know through her that you have acted kindly with my master. Rashi teaches that will be the one whom you have designated means that she will be fit for Isaac, for she will be charitable and thus worthy of entering Abraham's household. Enter Rivka. We are told the maiden was of beautiful appearance. And she said, drink, my lord. And she hastened and lowered her pitcher to her hand and gave him to drink. And she finished giving water to him to drink. And she said, I will also draw for your camels until they will have finished drinking. Eliezer was a little bit smarter than me. He had just two items on his list. <laughs> One that the woman would come from Abraham's extended family, and two, that she exhibited chesed, kindness. Rabbi Jonathan Sachs wrote, Indeed, the sages said that the three characteristics most important to Jewish character are modesty, compassion, and kindness. Chesed 
which I defined as love as deed, is central to the Jewish value system. In essence, Eliezer had just one personal characteristic on his list, chesed. And Rabbi Sachs explains why. The sages based it on the acts of God himself. Rabbi Simlai taught the Torah begins with an act of kindness and ends with an act of kindness. It begins with God clothing the naked. The Lord God made for Adam and his wife garments of skin and clothed them. And it ends with him caring for the dead. And he, God, buried Moses in the valley. Chesed, providing shelter for the homeless, food for the hungry, or assistance to the poor, visiting the sick, comforting mourners, and providing a dignified burial for all became constitutive, that's the hardest word ever, constitutive of Jewish life. That means it's part of Jewish life. Chesed, said the sages, in, is in some respects higher even than tzedakah. Our masters taught, loving kindness, chesed, is greater than charity, tzedakah, in three ways. Charity is done with one's money, while loving kindness may be done with one's money or with one's person. Charity is done only to the poor, while loving kindness may be given both to the poor and to the rich. Charity is given only to the living, while loving kindness may be shown both to the living and to the dead. Rabbi Isaiah Halevi Horowitz, in his compilation of ethics, Shnei Luchot Habri, wrote, the main ingredient of chesed, kindness, is that it be performed without expectation of a reward. Only when performed thus is one called generous. Otherwise, one is simply a traitor, T-R-A-D-E-R. -E Not only should he perform acts of kindness for the dead, but even more so for the living, by doing so, he will emulate the virtues practiced by God himself, who constantly performs acts of kindness without any thought of compensation. By the simple acts of providing water to Eliezer and his camels, very strenuous at the time, Rebecca showed she was the embodiment and epitome of chesed. Eliezer knew this to be the bedrock of a long, strong relationship. So we asked Abraham's relatives if Rebecca could return with him. They summoned Rebecca and said to her, do you want to go with this man? And she said, I will go. As a quick aside, I have to add that Rashi explains, we learn from here that a woman should not be given in marriage without her consent. Very modern. So I had a list, and Eliezer had a list. If I were 23 years old today, I could use modern technology to tell me what the world's experts think are the foundational characteristics of successful long-term relationships. Often cited are mutual respect, excellent communication, honesty, kindness, empathy, ability to forgive, and total commitment to the other. Frequently, when I've had the honor to give this to Var Torah, I talk about my relationships with daily prayer are tefillot. These tefillot are the prime repository of Jewish values. And it turns out, we actually learn about these underpinnings of relationships each and every day. When we praise God for listening to prayer, we acknowledge that listening, hearing, and communicating are vital to our relationships. When we thank God for faithfully bringing us to life each day, we know that the unconditional all-in commitment to the other is paramount to healthy relationships. When we tell God we will bless him each day, we remember how vital appreciation is of the other and how that is part of a strong relationship. When we praise God for being merciful and slow to anger, we are reminded that we too must be patient and forgiving with those people in our lives. When we note that God opens his hands and satisfies the desire of every living being, we daily rededicate ourselves to chesed, being generous, selfless, and in tune to what the people in our lives need. And as a last example, though there are many more, when we know God is near to all who call upon him in truth, we necessarily connect vulnerability, accessibility, and honesty to the nearness and deep closeness needed with the significant others in our lives. Yet, as Eliezer showed, a strong, enduring relationship fundamentally and necessarily starts with chesed, unconditional selflessness, 
generosity, kindness, and sensitivity. Stupidly, this was not at the top of my list, though it ought to have been. And lucky for me, I found it in Elise anyway. May we all have the blessing of experiencing chesed in our lives, and like our ancestor Sarah, to bring chesed to our corners of the world whenever that opportunity arises. Shabbat Shalom.